Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss this somewhat interesting theoretical study that proposes that certain stars out there seem to contain signs of extremely heavy elements that we've never seen anywhere in nature and have never even been able to produce right here on Earth. And so let's discuss this particular new discovery in a little bit more detail, talk about why this is important, and talk about where all this might lead as well. But first, I guess a few basics. So we know that heavy elements are everywhere around the universe, and we know that they are obviously produced in a lot of different supernova. And in some cases they require something even more powerful, like a kilonova. But overall today we know that this is exactly how most of the elements on planet Earth were created. Extremely powerful events billions of years ago that converted much lighter elements like hydrogen, helium, and even carbon and oxygen into something much heavier through what's known as R process. Also known as rapid neutron capture process, in essence responsible for at least half of the atomic nuclear heavier than iron. This really cool periodic table sort of shows us where most of the stuff comes from. Quite a lot of it is through supernova, quite a lot of it is also through merging neutron stars, but some of them, the ones that you see in a brownish color, have only really been produced by humans right here on Earth. They don't seem to exist in nature. I mean, they might, we just haven't seen them in outer space. But even though the overall idea of the R process is sort of understood, the details are really not. There are a lot of knowledge gaps here and there, and there are still a lot of unanswered questions. Specifically because in many cases, in a lot of different stars, sometimes scientists would discover elements that just would not make sense, would exist for reasons we cannot explain, or would be completely out of place. And so by focusing on a lot of other stars and a lot of different galaxies, more and more research has been trying to solve some of these mysteries and basically figure out where elements come from and how they form. Naturally, this is also important in order to understand how life was formed, how Earth was created, and if similar planets exist out there as well. And so in this somewhat recent study, researchers discovered a few unusual elements by looking at 42 different stars, right here in the Milky Way. Specifically, they found the abundance of certain elements that just don't really make sense because they shouldn't be there and nobody knows how they formed. For example, a few of these stars contain ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, and even silver, which have atomic numbers that cannot be explained with a simple R process. And some of them even have mass numbers of 99 to 110, implying that they must have followed some kind of a process we don't really understand, or, and this is actually the exciting part, there may be a byproduct of something much, much heavier. And here we're talking about the process of fission. In nuclear fission, which is of course how nuclear reactors work, the heavier the element, the more unstable it gets, and quite a few different elements and their isotopes will eventually decay into something else much lighter, producing more stable stuff. And so here the scientists realize that maybe what we're looking at in these stars are some of these leftover products after a decay of something much much heavier with a lot more mass. And so they started to investigate this, started to simulate this, with the main point being a question how heavy can these elements be in order to produce what we're seeing inside of these stars? Because there's just no other way to explain why there's so much of it in them. I mean, the point here is that these elements must have come from some other previous stars that must have gone supernova, had some kind of a possible R process that produced something even heavier, and that heavy stuff decayed into what we're seeing inside of these second generation stars. And the conclusion here is somewhat surprising. Whatever this was, it must have been much, much heavier than uranium, with an atomic mass of potentially 260 or even higher. With elements like silver and rhodium extremely likely being the result of this process, with something much, much heavier existing in these early stars. And this could only be produced by elements with the atomic weight of approximately 260, much heavier than anything else we've seen anywhere out there, and to some extent, very similar to what we usually produce in a lot of different experiments. For example, the heaviest element ever produced anywhere, Oganesson, has an atomic weight extremely close to 260 as well. Its atomic number is 118, and its atomic mass is 294. And so whatever produced elements inside these stars might have been a little bit less massive, potentially similar to this element, Lorentzium, or a lot of other elements that have only been synthesized on Earth and do not exist in nature, or may exist, we just didn't really know about it before. Basically implying some really unusual explosions we don't really understand very well, or our process that's way more powerful than anything we've seen before. Able to produce elements much heavier than merging neutron stars, but a little bit less massive than some of the most unstable elements 
produced by human experiments. And none of these elements have ever been seen naturally anywhere out there. Not in stars, not in galaxies, not even here on planet Earth. They've only been produced in super powerful experiments using very powerful beams, with a lot of these elements falling apart extremely quickly. Most of them have half-lives in milliseconds. For example, the heaviest element known to us, Oganesson, has a half-life of 0.7 milliseconds, which is very common for these experimental elements. With most of these experiments only able to produce like 5 to maybe 10 atoms in total. But the implication from this study is really exciting. It means that some of these experimental elements might physically exist in the universe at least for some time after certain extremely powerful processes, which we unfortunately do not understand and might even involve events and explosions that we've never seen before, leading to some new discoveries and maybe some new mysteries. And so in that sense, we still can't really answer the question of how heavy can elements be out there in actual physical universe, not the one from various experiments, and more importantly, are we going to be able to find them somewhere out there and what produces them? If some of the heaviest stuff is produced during merging neutron stars, basically the most powerful events known to us, for something to be able to produce an element with a weight of 260 atomic mass, which is practically double of plutonium, the heaviest known element produced in merging neutron stars, that's something that event has to be absolutely ridiculous. Not a supernova, not a kilonova, not even a hypernova, some kind of a ultra ultra nova. I mean, we don't even have a name for it yet, but it seems to be something that's able to produce the most heavy elements ever. But there's actually something else exciting that might be discovered with this type of research that's related to another concept. Island of stability. A somewhat hypothetical concept when it comes to atomic nuclei that essentially suggests there are these magic numbers around which the elements seem to be stable. A magic numbers of neutrons and protons that create stable atoms that do not fall apart and can physically create objects that would last for billions of years. So the current known numbers 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126 are pretty well established, but more are predicted to exist. And so even though generally heavier elements usually decay extremely quickly, the prediction here is that at some point we reach a new island where elements become stable once again. And so the atomic number 126 and 184 are sort of believed to be these numbers. And so in theory it's possible that some of these events can even produce never before seen stable elements that might still be around somewhere out there in the universe in some stars and possibly even inside some planets, but are just impossible to detect for now because they might have been produced in extremely small amounts. For example, one predicted element that might be stable is known as ambihexium. Nobody ever produced this, nobody has ever seen this, but for all we know it might be stable it might physically exist and might even be produced in these very powerful events responsible for the elements detected in these stars. Now naturally this is all hypothetical and nobody knows if these really exist, but future studies might show us more, especially as more and more stars are examined and more and more elements are discovered inside of them. Now at the moment I don't really think we have the technology to detect some of these minute elements in them, but with time we will. And so until those future studies or until these new discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Another mystery to be solved in the future, nothing clear just yet. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.